They say never meet your idols, and for the most part, that's probably true. For anybody that remembers the Superbike arms race from a few years ago where all of the bikes had exhaust flaps that popped out when you braked or the pro peloton was screaming like children at all of the hot messes that the bike industry had created and forced them to ride, you're probably looking at the bike over my shoulder and thinking, here we go again. Well, I have good news. The new Cervelo S5 is the Bill Murray of bikes. It is the one thing that when you meet it, you are not let down, and I can't wait to talk to you about it. Let's get into it. Show me some B-roll. Did anyone get my Bill Murray joke? I swear to God, if you ask your friends, someone has met Bill Murray and they spent a wild night with him out in Vegas or something. Uh, I've got a buddy that uh, goes to a golf tournament every year, a, a pro-am, and they met Bill Murray because he stole their child. Then he proceeded to take a photograph with them to prove it. And then the next year when they went back, he remembered them and stole their child again. This has become a running gag with Bill Murray. So if you're thinking about great idols, I gotta say I'm betting Bill Murray has to be the best. And when we start thinking about bikes, I've gotta say this new Cervelo S5 is looking pretty darn good. All right, so we are here to talk about bikes, not Bill Murray. Although, if you have a Bill Murray story, for the love of God, please share it with the rest of us. Put it in the comments. This is a pretty special bike. And for those of you that are wondering who this bike is for, you probably know if it's you. But if you are a Tour de France racer, this is probably for you. Uh, if you watched the Tour de France in 2022, you probably realize that this bike won three stages in the men's race, it won two stages in the women's race, it won the most combative jersey, and it won two green jerseys. So great, if you're in the Tour de France, this is probably the bike you should pick. The other group of people that this bike is for is for anybody that wants to go fast. Uh, if you want to race, great. If you want to beat your buddies, great. If you want to win town line sprints, great. All of those things this thing is going to do in spades. And the last group of people that this bike is perfect for are those that think it looks cool. Now, that category, I feel like, was the fatal flaw of superbikes of the past. When you bought one of these ridiculous superbikes that had no brakes and nothing on it worked, it was always such a shame that you had to come back into the bike shop to get your brakes adjusted because they wore down just a little bit. Now, this new bike, the new Cervelo S5, I think is one of the easiest to use everyday bikes that there is. Just because it looks like a UFO doesn't mean we've lost any usability. All right, so let's start by talking a little bit about the changes that were actually made to the frame. Lo and behold, uh, the governing body of cycling expanded their rules to allow frames to have more depth. And what that ultimately means is that they can have longer or deeper airfoils that make them faster if you've done it right. And there are a number of different places on the S5 where that comes into play. The first two places are up at the head tube and on the fork. If you look very closely at the front of the fork, you'll notice that there is a bulge that comes out away from the bike. That bulge helps to be the first place where air comes in contact with the bike. That helps to make sure that air is able to hit the bike and start flowing over it very smoothly. This is a change from the previous generation. The next place where you're gonna to start to see some changes in the bike are on the back of the head tube shape. The tail or the back end of that airfoil has been lengthened. And when you put it side by side with the old bike, you'll see it's actually quite dramatic. There's a much deeper shape to it. Now, those things come into play in a couple of different ways. For one, that longer shape helps to keep air flowing cleanly down the side. So if you're blasting along at 50 miles an hour like we all ride, that's gonna keep air compressed really tightly to the frame and make it very fast. The other place where that's gonna to start to come in is in heavy crosswind or real world riding conditions. Those two shapes together help keep air attached in heavy crosswind so that the bike feels much more stable. Another place that you're gonna notice that there have been some changes are near the seat post. If you look right in front of where the seat post inserts into the frame, you'll notice there's a new little cutout right there. That new area that has been added to the frame helps to smooth air out as it flows between the rider's leg and the frame. This is one of the places where air moves the fastest over the frame. 
The last place that you're gonna notice is down near the dropout, so the back end of the bike. Air has been cleaned up here by having a much simpler shape. That much simpler shape comes from the reduction in cables. So guess what? No more mechanical routing on these bikes. So if you're looking for something that's gonna have nice, easy, crisp mechanical shifting, you're gonna need to go somewhere else. Another really important part of the aerodynamics is the wheels. And this new S5 also gets brand new wheels. A partner brand of Cervelo is Reserve. Reserve makes wheels for Cervelo and for Santa Cruz mountain bikes and a couple other brands as well. And this partnership that they've had for this bike helped to build wheels that were built very specifically for how this frame handles turbulence and air. As a matter of fact, Cervelo has helped them better understand the forces that impact a bike to make sure that the bike is actually stable. Uh, for me, I'm one of those people that if you put a big deep wheel on my bike, and put me in a big crosswind, I really seize up. So a wheel that is deep, but still performs really well on a crosswind is something that's really important. The wheels, as you start to look at them on the bike, are really, really interesting. They have a very unique profile from the front to the back. The front wheel is different uh, in that it is a wider wheel, and the widest point of that wheel is actually very close to where the tire is. That helps, like I said, to make sure that the air is stable as it passes around the edge of the tire and while that wheel is rotating. You move to the back and the back wheel is actually deeper but narrower. And that is because the air is moving faster over the bike and it is able to be used more like a sail to help push the bike along rather than being affected by crosswinds. Tires. And this bike can fit big tires. Uh, Tires come into play when we're talking about compliance as well, which I think when you get onto a bike like the S5, you do expect it to be a really rigid bike. But something that's quite cool about this new one is they are actually specking it with 28C tires. They actually say that is more aerodynamic than any other tire choice they could have. And again, that pairs right in with the wheels that they are shipping on these bikes. And if you so choose, I suppose you could race cyclocross on it because you can go all the way up to a 34 millimeter wide tire and still fit it inside of the frame and fork. The next part that's really important comes back to pedaling performance. If you haven't seen one of these things in person and you do get the chance to and you see the bottom bracket, you'll instantly be like, I bet that's stiff. It is enormous. It is the size of a softball down there. And all of that comes in to make sure that the bottom bracket is able to resist your pedaling force. As you push on the pedal, you do not want that bottom bracket coming out of plane with the rear wheel. And in this case, I mean, what? It won multiple stages in the Tour de France. It did all the stuff. So like, let's just call that a check. It did it. The last thing that we're gonna talk about is the user friendliness of the new S5. Uh, this is something that honestly has never been talked about with a super bike caliber bicycle. Now, there are a few places where this really comes in, but we'll start picking through them one by one. The first thing is how the handlebar and stem attach to the bike. Previously on the generation before this, uh, there were a number of different bolt lengths that were needed in order to affix the stem to the bike. The new version has three bolts. They're steel bolts, they're long, they fit through every spacer that is available on the bike. You do not need to change or fix length or anything like that. And they go straight into the frame. It makes sure that you've got a very good connection between your stem and the rest of the bike. The next piece of that puzzle comes into the spacers. This is always a massive, difficult thing. Uh, trying to figure out how you can raise and lower the front end of the bike without rerouting cables, doing all sorts of other stuff. The spacers on this bike put together like a puzzle piece. They're really simple to take apart and they can easily be added or removed without having to re-cable the bike. Uh, the same bolts that hold the stem on go straight through it. They hold everything fixed in place, and they're also structural. So since they are a piece that the handlebar is pushed onto, they are part of the front end stiffness of the bike. The last piece of the puzzle comes into the handlebar. Previously, you were stuck with having to adjust the handlebar in increments. Now they have built a new solution that has two bolts on both sides of the stem that allow you to loosen them and rotate the bar fore and aft by five degrees. So you can go five degrees up or five degrees down. So you can get that perfect tilt to the handlebar to make sure that it's hitting your hands just how you want. 
Moving to the back of the bike, uh, they've also updated the seat post. Uh, I think nowadays a lot of people are thinking that a 25 mil setback seat post is probably a little too much for most people. A lot of fits are coming a little further forward. So Cervelo has moved with the times and they have switched to ship all the bikes with a 15 millimeter offset back. That gives a much wider range of fit options. And if you do need a bigger setback, they will have those parts in stock or old seat posts are still backwards compatible with the new bike. Normally we finish these videos talking about price and spec and all that stuff, uh, but I've got some woeful news. These bikes are not cheap. Uh, and unlike a lot of the other bikes that we talk about uh, with a lot of different models and spec choices that were thoughtfully chosen by the product managers at these wonderful companies, uh, there's not a lot to go on here. Uh, there are two levels. Uh, there is a $13,000 one and a $9,000 one, or you can buy a $5,500 frame set that again, only takes electronic shifting. So I'll let you guys pick what you want. You got Durace or Red or Force or Altegra, and that's it. 9,000 or 13 grand. That's all we've got on the Cervelo S5. If you have made it this far and you're still here, you're still listening and you like this shirt, Go ahead and leave a comment down below and we'll pick somebody uh, and we'll send you one. Let me know. Thanks and we'll see you on the next one. I hate that I do this shit and then it ends up on film.